of John. John chapter 16. Amen. John chapter 16, we'll start reading in verse 7. John chapter 16 and verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot hear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show, and shall show if unto you. All things that, uh, that the Father hath their mind, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show if it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just a little story to get started here today. There was a king. He was into falconry. You know what that is? It's hunting with falcons, a bird. He was into falconry, and he had one particular bird that he loved very much. It was, he was uh, very devoted to one another. It was his favorite bird to hunt with. He would take his, get on his horse and take his, his falcon and he'd go out into, the, uh, out into the forest and there he would release that bird and that bird would hunt, bring back its prey. He enjoyed hunting with the bird, found it to be relaxing, refreshing. On one particular occasion when he was out hunting and practicing falconry, he is out in the forest, and he was far away from his castle and far away from uh, other people. There he came upon a stream, and he knelt down, and he took a cup, and he knelt down at that stream, and he dipped that cup into that cold, cold water. And he began to, when he pulled the cup out of the water and started to bring it to his lips, his falcon came swooping down and knocked that cup out of his hand. He and he yelled at the falcon and expressed his dismay and picked up his cup and bent back down to quench his thirst and, and uh, dipped down into the, the stream once again and brought the cup back out. And when he brought the cup back out, here came that falcon down again and it swooped down and knocked the cup out of his hand. And now he was really angry. He was very mad. So he he picks up the cup once again and he begins to bend down to scoop up out of the, out of the water. And, and uh, as he began to bring it back up, the falcon came swooping down, and he was watching for him this time. And as the falcon came down, he swatted that falcon, and he smacked it, and he killed that falcon. In his anger, he killed that falcon. He began to wonder whatever came over this bird, that it would get so crazy that it would attack me in such a way that it would keep me from drinking, from quenching my thirst. And as he began to search around and begin to look, he found just a little bit upstream from where he was drinking, there was a, a poisonous snake that was in the water that had died in that water in that poisonous snake. And no doubt if he'd have drunk of the water, he would have been poisoned. His falcon had been trying to save his life, but he killed the very thing that was trying to save him. Do you know there is something about the Spirit of God that many times we, we, we enjoy the Spirit of God. We love feeling the Spirit of God. 
We enjoy the benefits of having the Spirit of God come in and be among us. But there's one of the activities of the Spirit of God that we don't enjoy very much, and it is that action of conviction that He brings upon us. It is the job and it is the work of the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to bring conviction upon us. And the purpose of that, of that conviction is to move us towards God. To move us away from sin in our life and to move us towards God. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God comes into uh, this place today and He begins to deal with your heart and He begins to deal with your life. And many times conviction is not pleasant. Conviction sometimes can, be, can make you uncomfortable. It's conviction is something that we want to run from. The conviction of the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful today that God would love us enough. I'm thankful today that God would care enough about us. That he would instruct the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin. I'm glad that the Lord loves us enough. That he would send the Holy Spirit. Amen. That the Spirit of God would come into this place. And begin to deal with my heart about things of God. And that the Spirit of God would draw me and and urge me to leave the world, to leave sin, to leave the things of the world, and draw closer to God and to bring myself to the Lord. You see, the Lord loves you. You say, why is it love? Why would it be love? It is the love of God that God loves us. He is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. He loves us enough that he does not want us to die in our sins. He loves us enough that he wants to save us from the punishment of sin. He loves us enough that he wants to deliver us from the consequences of sin in our life. And it's the love of God that sends the Holy Spirit, amen, to deal with us and to draw us out of our sin and to draw us away from the things of this world so that we can draw closer to God. It is the love of God that he sends the Holy Spirit to deal with us so that that we can have communion with God. It is the love of God that draws us out of sin so he can have fellowship with us and have a relationship with us. It's because God loves us that he brings conviction upon us. Man, he's not willing that any should perish. He's not willing that any should die in their sin. He's not willing that any would die lost. He's not willing today that you would die in your sin. He does not want you to suffer the consequences of your sin in your life. And it is the goodness and love and grace of God that he sends the Holy Spirit here today to deal with us. Amen. The Holy Ghost conviction. Amen. Conviction. Let me describe it to you for just a little bit if I can. Let me describe what conviction's all about. Yeah. Amen. When you heard the, the Holy Ghost, when it comes to bring conviction upon your life, it intensifies the guilt and shame of your sin. It intensifies the guilt and that sh- the shame of that sin to the point that you feel like you cannot bear it anymore. He makes you feel like he makes you feel that the punishment of your sin is imminent and that it will happen soon. He makes the consequences of your sin become real to you so that you see what sin is doing in your life. He makes your guilt and the shame so overwhelming. That you feel like you are being suffocated by the guilt and shame of your sin. That you cannot survive another moment. He makes the punishment of sin. He makes it feel, makes you feel like that hell is raging for you right now. And that hell is imminent and that you will be cast into the lake of fire as very, very soon. And that guilt and that shame and the, and the punishment of sin and the consequences of sin just overwhelming you. Sounds pleasant, don't it? It's not. It's not. Tell you, can I tell you, there's, there's physical attributes of conviction. I think when you're under conviction, you will feel your heart rate increase. You will feel the anxiousness. 
and the anxiety because of the conviction that you're feeling in your heart. When you are convicted and you lay on your bed at night, sleep avoids you. You, you toss, you turn. And you are like, the Bible says, you are like a hinge upon the bed. Back and forth, back and forth. You cannot find a comfortable position. Your bed and your pillow become a stone. You cannot rest because of the guilt and the shame that seems to be pressing upon you. You feel like that, you, that, if, you, that if you close your eyes to sleep, that you will awake in hell itself. You feel that that is conviction. You say, well, why would a loving God do something like this? Why would a God that loves me so much put me through so much torment? Amen. But that is the love of God. Conviction. You will feel like that your, your hands will sweat. Sweat will roll down your face. If you're sitting in a church pew many times, you'll find something to clinch and something to hold to, something to clinch your fist. And you'll, you because of the conviction of the Holy Ghost, many times it'll cause tears to come to your face and tears to roll down your face because the Holy Ghost is dealing with you about your sin and your life. Amen. You find yourself without excuse. You find yourself without any reason for sin. You find yourself running out of all the explanations that you've had for your life and for your sin and you stand exposed and helpless before God and you feel like the judgment of God is poured out upon you. For the brim, that don't sound very pleasant. Conviction was not meant to put you at ease. Conviction was not meant to rock you to sleep. Conviction was not meant amen, to make you feel at ease in your sin. But conviction was sent upon you by a loving God, by a Holy Ghost. Amen. That it would draw you away from that which is destroying you. That it would draw you out of your sin. That it would bring you to God. Amen. Thank God that God loves you enough today that you're feeling what you're feeling right now. Thank God that he loves you so much that he would send the Holy Ghost to come down and deal with your heart because he don't want you to die in your sins. He don't want you to suffer the consequences. He don't want you to be punished for your sins. He wants you to escape and to know what it is to have the love of God. He wants to have a loving relationship with you. He wants to restore a relationship with you. He wants to bring peace into your life. Amen. And so he brings that conviction upon your life. Hallelujah. Thank God for conviction. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Have any of you ever experienced conviction in your life? Would you lift your hand? You felt the conviction of the Holy Ghost? Amen. You know what? It don't matter if you're a child. It don't matter if you're a senior saint. It don't matter who you are. Amen. That conviction of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That conviction of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That deals with your life. Amen, that draws you to God. Thank God, amen, that he loved you enough one day. Amen, when you was a child, when you was a teenager, when you was a young person, amen, when you was a married folk, when you was an older folks, how, whoever it is, that the Holy Ghost make you feel like, you know what, I need to get saved. Amen. When I was just a child, I felt that, that condemnation in my heart. I felt like I was doomed. Amen, just because of a red heart, white heart, black heart. I'm telling my my black heart full of sin. Amen. The red blood of Jesus. Amen. Washed it and made it white. Let me tell you what. I felt like I was dying in my sin. I felt like the Lord was going to come at any moment. I felt like that I was going to be lost in my sin and I had to pray as just a child. Amen. But I also saw a man way up in years, almost 80 years old, never been to church, never been given his life to God, never surrendered the Lord, never served the Lord, but the Holy Ghost started dealing with him. Felt like he was going to die lost without God. Amen. And before, you know, at 79, amen, he surrendered his life to the Lord and gave his life to Jesus. Why? Amen. It's the Holy Ghost conviction. Amen. That gets a hold of us to draw us. Amen. Paul preaching to Felix. And the Bible says that Felix trembled as, as Paul reasoned with him of righteousness and judgment to come. Amen. As Paul preached to him and told him, amen, he trembled under the conviction of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God. Thank God for conviction. Thank God that God would convict you today. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Many times in the Scripture, the Holy Spirit is 
as described as a dove. By the descended on Jesus Christ in the form of a dove. When you think about a dove, you think of a peaceful animal. You think of a bird that is, that is easily intimidated, a bird that is very flighty, a bird that is very cautious and peaceful. And in the Holy Spirit, I think many times we could describe the Spirit of God. He comes and he feel, it feels like that he's being harsh. It feels like it's being, that it's being, he's being cruel. It feels like that he's a hard taskmaster, the Spirit of God. But when in reality, he is like a little dove. When we feel conviction, we feel like, my Lord, you're so horrible. You're so mean to me, Lord. God, to make me feel so miserable inside. But really, the Spirit of God is like a dove. And you know what? It is so easy for us to shake off conviction. And it is so easy for us to move away from the Spirit of God. It's so easy for us to shake it off and to scare it off and to run away from this, from, from conviction that you feel. You say, how can it be easy? And then people do it every day. And many people have seared their conscience against sin. Many have learned, hey amen, they've gotten hard and harder and harder in their heart. Hey amen, that they can just turn and walk away from God. I've seen people, men that sit on a church pew, and the Holy Ghost conviction be so strong upon them. The conviction of their sin being so strong. And yet they would, with all their strength, with all of their might, rise up from a pew. And sometimes even with tears rolling down their face, they walk out a back door and walk away from the conviction of the Holy Ghost. Hey Amen. I've seen people laugh it off. I've seen people scoff at it. I've seen people run from it. Hey Amen. I've seen people try to avoid it. Hey Amen. They, let me tell you what. The Spirit of God, it is like a dove. Amen. If you're not careful, amen. If you have, if you're not careful, the Spirit of God, you can shake it off. Yes, you can laugh it off. You can scoff it off. You can get up and walk out the door. Amen. But listen, it does not change the punishment of sin. It does not change the fact that you're a sinner and that you're lost. It doesn't change the fact that you're walking away from God. All it does is leave a broken-hearted God. Amen. Oh God, that is grieving because you have once again resisted the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. It's kind of a humorous story, but there was a preacher. And he wanted to preach on the dove descending. And he wanted to illustrate it in an in a, in a amazing fashion. Something that would really shake the people. Something that would really get them, focus their attention on that dove ascending. So he went and he found a dove and he, he arranged to have a cage put way up in the church, high up in the church. And he arranged that he, could, uh, that he could release that dove out of that cage at just the opportune moment. With just a push of a button, he could release the bird out of the cage. And his hope was the bird would come down and people would just be at awe at the descending of the dove. So... He arranged the cage. He arranged the bird. But he had to put the bird up there pretty early in the day. He left that bird up there. Service went on. Service went on. But it was really hot up there in that top of that. Really hot. Time came for him to open the cage. And when he opened the cage, a dove went boom. A dead dove. You know what? There's many times, and that many people have killed the dove. Just as the king killed the bird that was trying to save his life, there's been many that have killed the dove that has been trying to save their soul. You may give you more, you know why you could say you give, there's people that get angry at God for the conviction that they feel. They despise God for the conviction that they're feeling. They misinterpret the fact that what they're feeling, that conviction, is that God hates them. But it's not that. It is the love of God. It is the love of God. It's God trying to save them, trying to draw them out of their sin. And the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3, when God said, he said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Amen. Can I tell you, you can get to a point 
where the Spirit of God will no longer deal with you. You can get to a point where the conviction will not be there anymore. But it is a sad state of affairs when you finally have got your heart so hardened, when you have become so calloused, when sin has done such a work in your life that you can no longer feel the Spirit of God deal with you. It is a sad state of affairs when you can sit in the house of God and not feel the Spirit of God convict you of sin. When you feel come to the house of God and not cry a tear and not feel God and not feel the urge to pray or the need to pray. I mean, that's a sad state of affairs. But many people, amen, have killed the dove. Amen, to such a point that they could come to the house of God. Amen, they can sit there and never feel conviction. Never be moved. Man, you've been in those services where the Spirit of God would be dealing with people. And there would be those there that could not feel God. Not feel God. I've seen people that came and tried to pray, but they had already killed the dove. And they prayed, they tarried in an altar. And they could never feel God. Amen. David said, in the Bible and the Psalms says, Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And Lord, I don't want to ever get to the point that I can't feel your spirit. Lord, I don't ever want to get to the point that I don't feel conviction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a dangerous thing for somebody to scoff and push off conviction. The Bible says that Felix trembled as Paul preached to him and reasoned with him of righteousness and judgment to come. The Bible says that he says, I'll call for you another time. Another time. And from what we know of the history is that he never had an opportunity. He never surrendered his life to the Lord. And then somewhere he killed the dove. And while God's dealing with you, is the time for you to surrender your life to the Lord. While God is speaking to you, it's a time for you to surrender. Amen. Let me tell you, you know, there's been times people, that people feel conviction. They pray, pray until they feel better. Then they go out and they walk away from the altar. They go back out into the world and they continue the same sinning. They're living the same sinful life that they've been living all along. Let me tell you what you did. You just smacked the dove around for a little bit. You didn't really, you didn't find repentance. You didn't change your life. Amen. The Holy Ghost is going to convict you. You're going to feel conviction again. You could, you could cry and you can pray until you feel better. But what God wants more than anything is for you to change your life. Change your life. Amen. Say, Brother David, is, you know what? Church, it's not, it's not just the sinner today. Because I find that the Spirit of God still convicts my life, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that God still brings conviction upon my life. Can you say amen, church? I'm glad that there's times when maybe I'm not doing just right. The Spirit of God still has an opportunity to speak to me and convict me. Amen. When there's things that God wants me to improve on and step up and do better. Amen. To draw closer to Him. Amen. The Holy Spirit comes and He brings conviction upon me. Amen. It starts dealing with my heart. I'm thankful that God loves me enough. He loves me enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? Amen. The Bible tells us that today is the day of salvation. What I think is important there is when we say today is the day of salvation, is that you realize that right now, while the Spirit of God is dealing with you, it is the time. Yes, it is. It is the time to surrender to God and make your life right with Amen. You. This is the opportunity. This is, this is the, the time. Right. Amen. If you have sin in your life, regardless of what anybody else may think or anybody else may say, I want you to know, amen, that the Spirit of God is dealing with you. You need to make it right today. You need to make it right. Amen. Amen. Maybe you're here today and you said, you can tell me that, you know what? Amen. I've been feeling such a shame and a reproach in my life. Feeling such guilt, feeling such an overwhelming, overwhelming 
guilt and shame for my sin. Don't scoff at it. Don't try to avoid it. It's the Holy Ghost dealing with you. It seems like that my punishment for sin is imminent. I feel like that I could die today and be lost for eternity. I don't know. I, I feel like my heart is racing. I feel like my, my heart could explode within my chest because I know I'm not right with God when I see the consequences of my sin. The fear is rising up in me. Amen. I want you to know today the Holy Ghost is dealing with your heart. Amen. With our heads bowed right now. Dear Jesus, God, I pray that you speak to someone's heart. Dear God, speak to someone's heart today. Hallelujah. With our heads bowed right now. Amen. It don't matter who you are in this church house today. And it don't matter what, who you are or where you're sitting right now. Amen. But if you slip your hand up and say, Brother David, I'm feeling the Spirit of God deal with my heart today. And I need to pray. I need to pray. Would you lift your hand with me today? God bless you. I feel the Spirit of God dealing with me. I don't want to scoff at this. I'm taking it very serious today. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. You say, Brother David, I feel it in my heart and I know I need to do right. I felt this before. I know I need to do right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us. God, in this altar this morning, I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Those who lifted your hands, start making your way to this altar with me this morning. Amen. Church, would you come with them right now? Amen. Those who lifted their hand are making their way. Amen. I want you, church, come. Come. Let's find a place. Let's pray with them this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.